<laughs> the mass media wants you to believe that Trump lost the debate and that Kamala had him against the ropes. But did she really? Look. Yeah, Kamala looked more professional. But who cares about that? Do you think Putin and Kim Jong-un and all these evil world leaders care who looks professional? Who is more professional and a goody good? You think that helped Biden? They're walking all over him. We have terror on earth, wars everywhere because we have a professional president. When Trump was president, we had peace on earth, period. No wars, he eliminated ISIS, he eliminated the Iranian general. They absolutely respect him because they absolutely believe he'll push a button and have them bombed next. So Kamala can win the debate if by winning it means you were more professional on the stage. Cause yeah, she looks sophisticated, right? In her outfit and with her big ass earrings, which some are saying was a earpiece. Trump should have called that out. But regardless, she was more professional looking and sounding and stayed calm. And he is still more presidential because he exudes power and confidence. And you know with him, you have to stay in line and you walk on eggshells with him because he will retaliate like he did against the Iranian general. So when he said this one world leader, this Hungarian world leader absolutely respects him, it's true, they all do, all the strong men do. And we need someone that is unpredictable, an agent of chaos, so that we are respected. And so that they stay well behaved, or else Trump will bomb them, period. He absolutely will, he proved that. And nothing happened as a result because everyone fears Trump. So if winning the debate means who looked more professional on the stage, okay, big whoop, Kamala, what does that even mean? What are we talking about here? It's nothing more than a, a lawyer that prepares for opening statements, closing statements, and that's what she is, right? She was a lawyer for years. And, and since when did people like lawyers? We label lawyers as the worst of the worst, the lowest of the lowest all right, and all polls, politicians and lawyers are ranked the absolute worst kind of people. Nobody likes a lawyer. That's what Kamala is. Did you realize that? Do you know that, right? She was a lawyer. And if she didn't then become a senator and get into politics, you know what? She would have turned from prosecutor to a private defense lawyer because that's how you make more money. That's so many times. That's, that's, the, that's the path of a lawyer. And so she would have been a private defense lawyer representing child molesters and murderers. Yeah. Right? So there's nothing to like about her. She's polished. She's professional. She knows how to recite the lines in the little gotcha moments that she prepared for, that she memorized. You know, we were waiting for her word salad and she almost was starting to do it with the whole, you know, he owns land, he's a land, he's a, he's a, he's a land, the guy, the, the, right? When she was talking about how they used to own land 50 years ago and that their father, his father may have uh, not rented to so many blacks. But, um, so she almost started a word salad there. But what, what really gets her going on word salads is when she's confronted and pushed to respond to things. And obviously these uh, moderators at ABC didn't make her respond to anything. Um, because like the, the one really good word salad she did is on that Jussie Smollett thing with 2020 when she was running for president against all the Democrats. She got 0% of the vote, by the way. And uh, a reporter asked her, hey, so what, what is your opinion now of Jussie Smollett? And because she had said, hey, you know, this is a travesty, a tragedy. You know, he is, he's innocent and he's been lynched. And then when it came out that he did it all himself, he staged and faked it. She was confronted on that at an event. Surprise, right? And she had nothing. She, she should have said, I have nothing to say about that. No comment. But when she goes into trying to explain something that she's called out on, that's her absolute word, word salads. Okay, so that's what Trump should have done on. Let me say the things he really. Sh I'm disappointed in him for not elaborating, for not giving better details. Look, she didn't answer anything. One time that the moderators pushed her to say, "Why did you all wait? Why did you and Biden wait till six months before the election to do an executive order at the border?" 
she she absolutely did not answer that. Instead, she went into the whole Trump's a bad man thing, like she, like she did all night, right? Trump's a bad man. Da, 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 da. Now about that that border bill that Trump supposedly called and had. I'm going to do a whole video after this about that because I don't want this one to be 30 minutes. But I'm going to talk about that and why the Republicans were absolutely right to kill that bill. But look. You know what? On these questions that Trump Trump has been Trump was given all these trap questions, because like for example, do you want Ukraine to win the war? What does that mean? He should have said, "What does that mean to win the war? How would Ukraine win the war? They've lost about what hundred thousand bodies, civilians, women and children, their soldiers. How would they win the war? There's no winning the war. So what do you, what do you use that mean? It's a trick question. How do I?" How do I say, yeah, yeah, Ukraine win the war and that make any sense? That would sound so stupid. There can only be an end of the war and a settlement, which means no one won the war. Yeah, Ukraine got a little victory here invading the bottom of Russia. There's a funny stuff here. And they've t captured some of Russia. But at the end of the day, Zelensky and Putin are going to come together and agree to stop the war. Russia will leave and stop invading Ukraine, and Ukraine will on invade the bottom of Russia, period. There's no winning the war. Putin's not going to win the war, and Ukraine, Zelensky's not going to win the war. Right? Russia's not winning the war. No one's winning this war. There's lots of dead people. That's it. Both sides. Russia has suffered massive amounts of casualties, too. It's really sad. And so Trump is absolutely right to say he wants the war done. He wants to save lives. Because there is no winning the war. It's a stupid question. The other stupid questions he should have absolutely refused to answer is about J6 and the 2020 election. He should have said, look, we have litigated this over and over again. You know where I stand on this. Next question. He's like, he literally had these questions at all the previous debates too. And in, he's on record publicly. Obviously we all know his position on January 6th and that he wants to free a lot of the protesters, not the worst ones, but a lot of them. And it was cool that he referenced, hey, d does anyone go to jail over the riots in Minnesota and it's taken over the city in Seattle? Democrats burn down cities. Do they ever go to the jail or not? Kamala bails them out. But you know, I don't know why he feels the need to go on and on and on about topics that at best are neutral for for anyone to hear him talk about besides his the base. And you know, he's giving him more red meat, but he doesn't need to give him more red meat anymore. We're already on his side. Just stop talking about January 6th. Stop talking about the 2020 election. He just said, why are you asking me this? Like you already know what I've said in depth, in detail at, at all the previous debates and in tons and tons of interviews. What kind of questions are these? So no, next, he should have done that. No one has ever done that, huh, to a moderator at a debate. He should have, because he had absolutely nothing to gain by just relitigating January 6th, and it just makes him look bad, maybe, to some independents. So I wish he had done that on that. And now the biggest thing, the biggest issue is about immigration. So many times he said that, you know, the illegal immigrants coming into this country are destroying our country, destroying our country, destroying our country, destroying our country. On a lot of these moments, I wish that he had actually elaborated and, and gone into the details of a lot of these examples. And specifically when Kamala, all she said was platitudes, right? So many times she's just giving platitudes. You know, run, spot, run. That's her policy plan on her website because there's nothing there. That was a good one that Trump said. But um, like when Kamala says, like, let's have joy for our neighbors. Let's just not be divisive anymore, right? It's kind of like saying, I'm so sorry for your loss. It's empty. It's dull. There's no substance to it. She's all about platitudes and feeling good and joy. And you know what? That will get you killed. That will get you killed, right? Like, no, no, don't be ignorant. Don't be, don't be naive. Don't live in la-la land like Kamala, la-la land. Kamala the, in la-la land. That's really a good one right there. Because at the end of the day, no, be a realist. Be in fear. Be paranoid. Be, be jaded. Do not believe that your neighbor is, is your friend. Do you know how many, and Trump should have said, do you know how many of our neighbors, literally their neighbors, these girls' neighbors, stalked them, raped them, and murdered them? He should have said, he should have looked, if he wanted to do an extreme example, like instead of the dog eating thing in Ohio, if he wanted to do something that was way more relevant, less isolated, but way more broad and widespread and throughout this country because so many New Yorkers are sick of the illegal immigration and all the crime that's going on there. So many people around the country and so many places are so sick of the illegal immigration. This would have been way more poignant and way more specific 
And it's still, it's an extreme example, but he should have looked at the camera and said, Kamala wants us to all be joyful to our neighbors. No, because you know what happened to Jocelyn Nunnagree and Rachel Moran and Lakin Riley and Maria Gonzalez and Lisbeth Medina and Molly Tibbetts and thousands of other girls and mothers out there in America. They were all savagely raped, strangled, beat to death, murdered by illegal immigrants. And so I pray for all of you watching that if you are a Democrat, that if you are really voting for Kamala's open borders, I pray that, that your sister, your mother, your cousin, your daughter, your female family member in your life, your loved one, isn't the next one to be raped and murdered by Kamala's illegals. Because that's what you're voting for. And only in your final breaths as you're being strangled will you realize the error of your ways. And you'll probably go, oh my God, that is what is meant by closing the border down because I wouldn't be getting murdered right now. That is what he should have said over and over again instead of just the generic, they're destroying our country. He should have, like at some of these times, he should have just picked an example and mentioned Jocelyn Nunnagree, 12 year old girl, was followed by her neighbors in the apartment complex and they raped and tortured and murdered her and tossed her body in the bayou in Houston, Texas. Or Lake and Riley, a nursing student who went for a jog and her neighbor in the apartments that oversees the trail, he pops out, he bludgeons her to death, takes her phone away so when she's trying to call 911, rapes and murders her. Legal immigrants everywhere. Rachel Moran, a 37-year-old mother, going on a hike in Maryland, her morning jog, a mother of five, and this El Salvadorian illegal who already murdered someone back in El Salvador and then came to walked into the country during Biden and Kamala and raped a nine-year-old girl and her mother in L.A. They had the surveillance footage of that, and they didn't know who he was because they these, these illegals are just off the grid. And then off he went to Maryland, where then he killed 37-year-old Rachel Moran, de destroyed her face so bad that even a mortician couldn't doll her up for her funeral. Her mother couldn't even recognize her still. Lisbeth Medina, a 16-year-old cheerleader in Texas, stalked by her neighbor, stabbed to death in her bathtub when her mom was at work. An 11-year-old, what is it, something Garcia, she was 11 and her father was at work and the neighbor of the apartment complex came in, knocked at the door, strangled her with a cord, left her lifeless body after raping her and shoving her body under the bed. These, and Molly Tibbetts, her neighbor, she's out on a jog, he pulls up beside her, gets mad, she doesn't want to flirt with him, she's out exercising, he murders her, puts her in her trunk, throws her in a cornfield. On and on, there's endless stories of this. Endless amounts of stories. He should have been saying these examples, I wish he had. Oh my gosh, he really, really needs to get that point across specifically, not just keep saying destroying our country, destroying our country, destroying our country. So on that, I'm disappointed that he didn't go into specifics. Even though he met with the mothers of Rachel Moran, Jocelyn Nunnagree. Uh, it's just, so he, you know, he's not articulate and he's not a great debater. But you know what he won the debate at? Showing passion. He is full of energy. He's full of passion. He's seething with anger and rage. And that's what this country needs. Not this, <laughs> not this joyful, airheaded looking, airhead looking and, and re reacting lady. Yeah, she's dressed sophisticated with her big ass you know, pearl earrings. Google that, by the way, because it is a weird thing that people are talking about. Uh, earpiece Kamala. It's weird. Why you allow that? Trump should have called that out. It, it just kind of ex gives a suspicion of cheating, all right? But, you know, and then and then on abortion, all right? He should have said, like, y'all know that even your beloved RBG, okay? Democrats' beloved RBG, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, even had concerns about Roe v. Wade because it was taking the power away from the states. And she thought it should be a legislative issue, that Congress should legislate the issue of abortion and that there shouldn't be a federal protection on it. Similar with what Europe does when they all came together, the legislator, and decided on 
12 weeks, 18 weeks, whatever. That's what it should be. So all Trump's saying is it shouldn't be just six weeks. He won't sign a, a federal ban. And you know what? Kamala refused to answer when Trump is like, what, what, will, you, will you allow six months, seven months, eight month abortions? Answer that. Why won't you answer that? And all she did, she deflected, she said, why won't you answer if you'll sign a national abortion ban? So, Kam so out of those two extremes, which one is evil? The one where Kamala won't answer if you will, uh, if she will allow seven month, eight month abortions. Like, yeah, it's rare, but you know what Trump should have also said is like literally though on the books in New Jersey, on the books in some states, there technically is nothing against aborting in the eighth month. Now, of course, 99% don't do that, but it's technically not illegal to abort in the ninth month. All right, it's technically. There's laws that allow it in New Jersey and in a bunch of these liberal states. So there you go. So Trump should have mentioned that and how RBG, beloved liberal Supreme Court justice, had concerns about this federal right, which Trump got removed. So now it's a state by state issue. And he's not for a federal abortion ban. He made that clear. But Kamala didn't make it clear whether or not she would allow six month, seven month, eight month abortions. Court Trump said very clearly he's for uh, exceptions for the for rape, incest, and the safety health of the mother. All right, so what else? What else off the top of my head? Those are the things that really stood out to me. But the bottom line is Trump does not look professional on a debate stage because yeah, you know he he does he likes to do his own kind of word salad sometimes, and he has the free thinking and off the cuff and say whatever he want. Well, you you got to respect that style. How could you not respect that style? And instead, you you more respect this professional, scripted, polished look of Kamala, where we all know like he was not. He was not treated fairly. They, they pushed back on his responses numerous times, right? And they fact-checked fact him multiple times. But with Kamala, when they asked her, hey, why did you wait till the ninth month or six months? Why did you wait six months before uh, the election for you and Biden to do an order at the border? She completely ignored it. Of course she wouldn't respond, that, respond to that. And... They did not follow up and say, um, but you didn't answer us. You, you kind of just said bad Trump and went off on something unrelated, but you didn't answer us. So would you, because with Trump, they said multiple times, but, but very simply, yes or no, would you, you know, would, would, you, do you want Ukraine to win the war and this and that, da, 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 right? They kept, they kept following up with him on something if he wouldn't answer in the way they wanted him to answer. But with Kamala, the, the one or two times where they actually asked a, a challenging question or almost was going to put her on the spot. Now, she could either, if she had chosen to answer it, she would have done a word salad. Like, when she chose to answer, hey, so what's your response now to the Jesse Smollett situation? She should have said no comment. But when she chooses to answer something where she's on the spot, she does her word salads. Because when she, it's not a scripted response and she doesn't know what's... She, she's caught off guard. Then she wasn't expecting that question. Uh, she, she, she should choose not to answer it. Or else she does do word salads. So she did not answer the moderators one or two things like that. And instead of them following up with her, pushing back on her to respond, and then maybe we would have we saw the real words, word salads, like when she started to do it with the whole land, land response to him. She, she just chose to ignore it, and the moderators didn't push back on her, but the moderators did push back on Trump, so that's lame. That, that right there shows bias, and that it was rigged, and that it was just, yeah, it was three on one. And, and, and the other thing is, like, Kamala didn't, she threw everything at him. Like, she, there was nothing too low for her to hit him with. Oh, but the, the crowd says this, and that people leave. When, I wish he, he had said so, so much, I wish he had responded. When she said, uh, people leave early at your rallies. He should have said the only time people leave early is when we're getting shot at, when they're trying to take out their leader to stop an election, to interfere with an election. That is the only time people are leaving early when we're getting shot at. That Because he didn't emphasize that assassination attempt enough either. So that would have been golden response if he had done that. Instead, you know, if you're not going to go with, if you're not going to think of that off the top of your head at, at, to respond to her, just leave it alone. Just like, like, just say, you know what, that is so silly. That is so unprofessional of you. Like we all know, we all see how, how many people come to our rallies. Next. So I don't... I don't like that he felt the need to respond to every little um, 
below the belt little cheap shot she was doing, right? To bait him. And yeah, okay, so he's easily triggered. Oh well, okay, yeah, he's she went she wins the debate as far as professionalism and staying cool because she was allowed to stay cool by not getting pushback on anything. Um, so she chose to deflect and ignore all the questions. She didn't have a plan for anything. She, so many of her responses were just bad Trump, this bad Trump, that it, it you know, Trump really held back because he was really reserved because he really should have, what would have been equal to what Kamala was doing to him is if, she, if he had said, you know, you slept your way to the top. You were a sugar baby homewrecker side hoe. It, go YouTube the uh, Judge Joe Brown interview where he just goes off on Kamala for four minutes. Okay, this is a retired distinguished judge. And he says exactly what she did, how she got where she is. She slept her way to the top and was put in uh, jobs that she wasn't qualified for, period. Everyone knows she was Montel Williams' a side hoe. And this, he should have just gone off on this stuff because you know, she was using a lot of her time to, to uh, attack Trump with irrelevant nonsense that has nothing to do with helping the American people either. And Trump, in in return, was focusing a lot on illegal immigration, just kept going back to their destroying our country, this and that, and that the economy, we were way better off under Trump, and we absolutely were. But, you know, uh, so it, for it to have been equal, Trump should have really taken those low blows. He So he really did hold back. And in that way, he was more professional than her. But when everyone's like, oh, who won the debate? Okay, yeah. If you if it's who was more professional looking, she looked more professional in her in her nice polished outfit and sophisticated looking, right, with her big pearl earrings that may or may not have been an earpiece. Uh, and yeah, she stayed cool because she was not pushed back on by the moderators because she knows she goes into word salads. Trump goes into word salads because it was so funny when he does it uh, because he chooses to answer every single thing and he has to. He goes in depth on every single thing. Kamala ignores every single thing, every single topic, and that's the end of the, that's the bottom line. Anything else? Let's see. I talked about abortion. I talked about uh, Ukraine answer. I talked about the immigration thing. I may have missed something, but those are the pressing things that I really. I'm screaming at the TV, hoping Trump says this. Come on, Trump, 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 say this. And and he only said what I wanted him to say, like 10% of the time. So I'm disappointed that he wasn't more in depth. That. He, and that he didn't stay cool under pressure. Because, yeah, the whole professionalism look is what some people look for, right? Some easily fooled uh, people that can that are just going to pick their president based on who looks good on stage or, you know, what they don't even know what they're really hearing. Because Kamala did not say anything. <laughs> she really did it. Um, but, you know what, I take presidential over professional every day, any day of the week. And being professional does not mean you're a good president. Just look at Joe Biden. Yeah, sure, he looks super professional. He's very meek and mild. And look at look at the world walking all over him. We got terror on earth. We got wars and terror everywhere. And Trump, okay, he's not professional. Who cares? He's passionate, man. He is so passionate. Oh, yeah, that other thing where Trump did mention you got to bus people into your rallies. you got to pay for people to go to your rallies. And he should have gone on and said, and you got to bring in absolute absolute ghetto trash like like Megan Stallion it, it, it not a, it, it, the, in the songs you play you the themes of your campaign the songs you play the concerts you got to bring in to bring in your your kind of people like it's just filth right like what like wop right like Cardi B wop this kind of these big slutty just just about pimping and prostitutionist songs Right, like that's that's what you need to play at your rallies to get certain kind of people to come to your rallies. I wish he had said that, because I was like, come on, yell out Megan Stallion, say it, because he was going into how who comes to her rallies, when he's like, oh, no one leaves my rallies early, and after your concert act's done, yeah, people leave your rallies, and you need to bring. You, just look at the tail of the tape. We play patriotic, uplifting music, and you play this slutty absolute trashy music i guess i guess that side can say oh it's uplifting it's powerfully uplifting feminism music but anyway so i wish he had done that too there's probably a couple other things i like to not do cuts so if i forgot something though important i am going to add it in at the end here but uh yeah and by the way i'm probably moving to rumble soon this is my first video in two three years because during the pandemic i uh uploaded a video not 
doing election denialism. I was simply saying it's such a disgrace that we use mail-in ballots to decide our elections just for the principle of the fact that we should not treat voting like a magazine subscription, okay? Uh, you know, you should have to show ID and you should have to go vote. I was not saying that the, anything about uh, Trump won. Nothing. I didn't say anything about Trump won. I just said it's a, 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 the way we handle elections is a, is a disgrace. And, and they flagged that. They suspended me. And even though they brought my account back because then they reversed course and YouTube said they were not going to take down election denial videos. And mine wasn't even an election denial video. It was a very nuanced, very articulate video about, hey, even my dead father received a ballot in the mail. All right. It's just it, that just can you imagine how widespread that is in so many states and in immigrant communities where people probably go around rounding them up and, and, and when people get ballots and they do illegally sign up. Um, and I just said that mail in ballots is it's so compromised and it's so sketchy and it's it's we should not be treating mail-in ballots like magazine subscriptions um and that video got removed i got suspended now i'm back but i'm shadow banned like i have seventy five thousand subscribers and it's just been sitting there uh all this time and i've been demoralized to even post on newsball tv so probably moving to rumble so look it up new rumble.com backslash newsball or newsball tv whatever we'll see Put a post this on on there too. Probably the the launch of, of the Rumble channel for Newsball, but we will. Yeah, that's that's me. When uh, I took a punch for Trump, met him. First, I met him, giving him a five hundred dollar bill. He was impressed. He was like, "Ooh, see that?" And then leaving the rally, I got attacked. Maga hat ripped off my head, punched, bloody face. Then I met him at the next rally. He sent my thousand dollar bill, and then another rally, he sent my. My gold bar, this is cool stuff. He he was always so impressed. He was tired of signing, you know, uh, MAGA hats and one dollar bills and magazines, which got a lot of those too, though. But um, so there you go. That's my take on the debate. Felt compelled to do it. Didn't didn't feel compelled after the Biden debate because that was <laughs> it was one sided. Um, yeah, I mean, who cares who's a better debater? Who cares who's more professional? That doesn't that doesn't mean anything about whether or not they're a powerful, strong force and a leader. So she 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 won the debate looking like a better uh, spokesperson. She's like a, a car salesman. Uh, she's sleazy. She's sleazy, and you know what? She's a lawyer, and lawyers are sleazy and hated. Like, do you need a reminder how hated lawyers are? Nobody likes lawyers. No. So she won the debate in that she can look more professional because she got to stay cool, calm, and collected because she wasn't pushed back on anything and avoided word salads because she chose to not answer things. And Trump still looks more presidential because he exudes power. He exudes confidence, brodociousness, toxic masculinity. Sorry, that is what America needs right now to stop getting taken advantage of at the border to stop getting taken advantage of with China and all these evil forces out there. And no, people, do not be joyful of your neighbors. Be suspicious of them. Be skeptical of them. And I will say what Trump should have said in closing. I pray to anyone out there, well, especially the Democrat voters out there, you all are for open board. Oh, yeah, that immigration bill that uh, Trump did not want and, and Democrats pretended to want that Kamala hit him with. He, I wanted him to say what I'm now going to tell you in a separate video following this video. So, so watch that too. But praying for your mothers, your sisters, your daughters, your cousins, every female loved one in your life. That they are the, not the next one to be brutally kidnapped, raped, and murdered by common laws illegals, by Democrats illegals. The 20 plus million illegals that are in this country because of what Democrats have been systematically wanting to do for decades now and like what ton of, ton of them are just from the last four years because they've really opened the floodgates like never before they aren't even trying to hide anymore you really really got to fight fire with fire they are just evil just absolutely destroying this country in this way and so it's just it's just so laughable and so sad though that anyone would vote for for a for a president for a kamala and before that, Biden, and before that, Obama, when their policies literally are to just let in anyone with no dis with no regard to whether they are from the El Salvador cartel, MS-13, 
from their prisons, from their mental institutions. It's really just so sad. They're just walking in this country and scattering. And then every freaking few days, there's rapes, attacks, and murders. New York York City Park, 13-year-old girl is raped in front of her 13-year-old boyfriend who was tied up by an illegal immigrant who just brazenly did this in the daytime. There's so many, there's been so many attacks in New York City by illegals. It is so sad and disgusting. Who would, and, and, and how, you have to know it's because of Democrats' policies literally for the last 20, 30 years. They, and they're, they, and she's sitting there, Kamala's sitting there with, <laughs> laughing and smirking when Trump's talking about how our country's being destroyed by illegal immigrants and referring to these crimes without specifically going into the details. She's standing there with, smirking and smiling. and uh, so, so she also won this debate with the most facial expressions, the most facial expre- expressions of, of laughing and smirking and just airheaded clownness looks like Trump actually stayed very very poker faced and yeah they said he didn't even look over her at all that was like a, a they were criticism of him yeah I wish she had been more uh chill and natural looking and, and you know looking more human but he was just seething with rage that yeah not because he's on the stage because oh he has to be on stage with a with a black woman as you know the media spun this into no he is disgusted that he has to be on stage next to someone that literally is for open borders literally caused the deaths of Jocelyn Nunnagree Rachel Moran, uh, Lake and Riley, Molly Tibbetts, and thousands of other girls. Every day, there is another girl being attacked, if not murdered, by an illegal immigrant. And one is one too many. Don't say, oh, well, you know, Americans do it too. Yeah, well, we have to deal with that. We don't have to deal with illegal immigrants committing the crime. It's just such a ridiculous response that Democrats give. But yeah, hey, Democrats praying for the females in your life that they aren't the next victims of Kamala's open border policies. It's just you are so in denial and so delusional if you don't realize that you are just putting them all in more and more danger by just letting in millions more and thousands of them are violent, dangerous, rapist murderers in the making. It's just a matter of time. It's like, how do you, how do you vote for anything other than that topic? Nothing matters more than immigration and having a secure border because just you just google how many freaking crimes and go look at all the pictures of these victims and instead you're more concerned with having the right to maybe one day have to abort you want to have that right that that red card in your back pocket the abort get out of a pregnancy card in your back pocket and that's what's fueling your vote on just because maybe possibly your state might make it more difficult for you to get abortion and in in that event then you could still just go to a liberal state all of those what ifs what if what if what ifs so much so much more ridiculous than you thinking that it's so ridiculous to think that the female in your life or you yourself is going to be the next victim of an illegal immigrant that is very realistic and it's happening every day and instead, how sick and evil that you're going to vote on a topic of, of because you're, what drives you to vote is to be able to have the right to abort some point in your life, which 99% nobody ever has to do. So there you go. Trump won the debate looking more presidential because he's tough. He exudes power. He's not scared of these evil leaders. And he keeps them in check. And he absolutely proved that. And they know that when he took out the Iranian general with the missile attack. And nobody did anything to retaliate against us. And that is how it is. Bottom line. He exudes power. He exudes confidence. He exudes respect. Toxic masculinity. And she, with her joyful, happy giddiness, like she's high... And wants to live in La La Land, Kamala La La Land. It's just so not real world. It's not real life. And you wanna, you don't wanna be, you don't wanna look over your shoulder. Then you need to vote Trump, because he he will close down our border for good, and he will get rid of a lot of these violent criminals that have walked into this country over the last four years. You cannot just be laughing in La La Land and trusting of your neighbors. <laughs> Unless you live in a gated community with walls all around you. It's so sad and sickening that, that the media is trying to spin it into Trump lost the debate. 
<sighs> she prepared like a lawyer does for each case. Lawyers are a s disgusting filth and scum of America, and everyone knows it. And But for this election, you're all going to, like, think she's something different than, than the fake act that she's obviously putting on. Give me a break. 